that's sort of big and impressive and scary. Hmm. What if it'd be my friend? Yeah. Why don't you go see? Hello, I am Toasty the Robot, Droid Number Six Zero Ten Alexa Three Seven Two. Would you like to be my friend? What say you? So, how'd it go? I'm getting mixed signals. <laughs> Carl, hello. How are you doing, man? I'm good to see you, Richard. It's great to have you on board. Thanks, man. Tell me about yourself. Tell everybody about yourself. What well, are you doing? Well, What's I'm up? here to talk to you about my film I made so many years ago. I can barely remember anything about the film, but it was called REM. I did it for the Crazy Eights, and uh, so that's uh, that's what's brought me in today, or br brought me up to space mm -hmm. today. Uh, the rest of the time, I mean, since then, I've just been making movies. I'm kind of a feature film guy. I'm, I started really serious and then I got a little bit more serious and then my films got even more serious and then I started to get a little bit funny and then trying to be funny and, and now I'm trying to find that place between drama and comedy, mm. that sort of really, really difficult line. I think, um, who's my hero? Alexander Payne does it really well. You know, he, he tells a relatively serious, sober tale like about a midlife crisis, a man's life spinning out of control, but he does it with this comedic love, you know? So you get a film like Sideways, which is actually pretty heavy in places, if you look at it, some really difficult stuff going on in the film, but you remember all the humor. Mm. And I think that, you know, when I try to sit down with a movie or go to the movies, I, I want to be entertained a little bit. I also want to be moved. I want to be pushed to think about stuff, but I don't want to be preached at and bored, you know, and there's something about humor that's so great. So I think, wow, if you can find that line. So that's my battle. That's that's, that's my spaceship, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you've been a director for a while now. You've been successful. You're in Canada, and, and now you're working in L.A. with some really incredible talents. What's, tell us a bit about your process as a director. Well, I love uh, filmmaking for exploring. To me, like, exploring is the whole idea. You know, if you're just bouncing back to the REM film, which was 2002, so it was a long time ago, but even then, the idea was to take a limited amount of film, uh, have a limited amount of time, uh, have a, have, you know, just have a limited palette to be able to work with and challenge yourself to kind of tell a story in this limited way, you know? And, um, and I was interested in, you know, having some fun with it, messing around a little bit, but staying really rigorously connected to these limits, you know? So that sort of um, challenge, being challenged in that explore, exploration, I mean, I've always really dug that part of filmmaking. As soon as filmmaking becomes kind of routine or it becomes, um, you know, too structured, mm. I, I get really frustrated by that. And I started doing, a few years back, I started doing improvised movies just to challenge the notion of the screenplay and how necessary is a script and what can actors bring to a movie, to a, to a narrative. I mean, mixed results and some of that stuff, but some hilarious discoveries too. I mean, really incredible stuff that happens when you improvise. But I found that um, it informed my screenwriting. You know, it got to the place now where I can work with actors on ideas and concepts and then have some of that improvising and inspiration sort of bleed into the writing process. And, you know, I think the goal of every filmmaker has to be to try to do something that's really authentic, authentically them. You know, it's like writing a, a personal story, a personal narrative, you know. How is that I love going? it. Yeah, I, I mean, I love filmmaking. I'm, I'm, a, I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm like an addict. Don't see yourself uh, quitting anytime soon. No, I mean, it's got, it's gotten tougher in a way. Like the, a few years ago, I got a work visa to go down to the States, and I, I took a place down in L.A., and, and so for the last few years, I've been back and forth a lot, you know, and I've started to try to really develop relationships down there because it, not so much for money reasons, but for reasons of talent, you know, wanting to connect my ideas to 
actors, you know, and how can I um, get actors of a certain caliber to kind of work on these small films? You've worked with some really great talented actors. I have. Actors. My new film is called The Leers. It's it's just something I'm in post on right now, but it stars Bruce Dern and Anthony Michael Hall and Sean Astin and. Um, you know, I was really lucky to get this kind of caliber of actor, but it, it's also easier when you're sort of there in their neighborhood, and you're you're not saying come to, you know, Alaska for for a couple months, or even Vancouver, which is right. a beautiful place and easy to get to, but you're still you're still having to kind of finance this machine that brings people to a place and 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 fulfills their expectations. And what I want to do is get away from that machine. They can sleep in their beds at night. Yeah, yeah and in this age, like we're talking about. About, um, you know digital technology we're talking about you know incredible uh, I mean I shot this beautiful 4k movie on these new Sony SLRs you know and they they dig so deep into the dark you don't need lighting that you used to need you, you don't you don't need infrastructure that you used to need I mean I dream of a day where the gaffer is gone uh, the lighting trucks are gone where the camera uh, team is reduced to just a few people uh, to me uh, that scale of work, that that scale of movie making, makes it um, makes it easier to play, easier to experiment, and it, it becomes more about the actors. It becomes more about the script and more about the actors, and those are the two things that matter to audiences. Audiences don't care about vis effects nearly as much as we think they do. <laughs> they just don't, you know. I mean, how many movies do we go to where we see the same thing over and over again, and you just kind of go, oh, come on. Again. Where's the original story, you know? So the shooting lab was like an AS7R or something like that? Or yeah, it's, it, little it, it's the little brother of the A7S Mark II. is a little camera called the A6300. Mm -hmm. It's a 4K mirrorless SLR. It's uh, it, it it's kind of mind blowing. You know, it, it was it was awesome. You know, this thing where I had EPK guys come out to you know work on the set and you know interview uh, Bruce Dern and and some of the some of the other actors and uh, their rigs were way bigger than than mine. It was just so funny. <laughs> Showing you know? up with these but I look at the movie, you know, and I, we're sitting there doing the the color post in Hollywood right now, and the, you know, you look on the big screen, um, it it doesn't look exactly like a big movie in the in the sense that you can tell that I'm doing something kind of lo-fi, a little bit available light. You know, it's got kind of a simplicity, mm -hmm. but the pristineness of the image is incredible, and to me, it's like. I've never met anyone in an audience who comes away from the film, unless it's really out of focus, or it's really badly exposed, or it's just really botchy, or you, worst of all, you can't hear it. Mm, yeah. I've never heard anyone come out of the audience and go, God, that, that film, I, I, I just thought it looked terrible. I couldn't hear anything. Um, th they only want to talk about the story. They want to talk about the story. They want to talk about how much they loved or didn't love the actors. Did I believe in that character? So how are you going to get, you know, especially without a, a ton of money and a ton of time, how are you going to get the actor to present a character that you, the audience, really, really cares about, falls in love with? You got to make something really beautiful, really personal, really authentic, and that actor has to be completely immersed in the experience. I think all of the trucks and the craziness of filmmaking, conventional filmmaking, kind of gets in the way of some of that stuff, and there's all this crazy chaos going on that has nothing to do with the essence of the movie, which is the story and the performance. So what you want to do is protect that with all you've got. And so my little philosophy right now is, well, I want to get rid of as much as I can. Take it away. Keep going it back to almost what you're talking about with Crazy Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just the limitations. Why not? Why, yeah, not? why not? Why not? Just to try it, you know? Um, it's not to say that there isn't like I'm curious to see the new, um, you know, uh, Bourne film. Of course, sure, Paul of Greengrass course, yeah. is a great director. I mean, you can't do that kind of work on a small scale. You can't. But at the end of the day, the reason why we like those movies is because we like that. We like that character. Yes. This broken man, this kind of complex character. He's great. Matt Damon's great. When they took him out and put, you know, Renner in to do a, it wasn't quite as good. It was okay. I mean, but it's not about the action. It's no, about it's the, about it's the character. The soul and the emotion. You wanted that character, yeah. right? That's what I'm here for. Well, on that note, we should watch your film then. Yes. Oh, and Mackenzie Gray is the star of this movie. He's a lovely actor that I've worked with for years, but this was the only time I actually had him leading in a movie. And uh, 
and I thought he was just terrific. And um, my old friend Frida Betrani plays uh, the, um, I don't know what you call her, the subject of the experiments <laughs> that he's running. Oh, uh, we did. Thank you. We had a lot of fun making it. Well, you met Toasty. I think you saw him. Toasty. Toasty. Yeah. I think he's the most high-end robot I've ever seen. He's incredible. Uh, I like the so the high-tech soccer ball. <laughs> we spare no incredible. expense on this space station. We use all the spare parts really. up the last one. Oh, it's an honor to be on your station. It's great to have you. Thanks, man. Well, right over there, we're going to watch it on the big screen. <laughs> hey, Toasty, roll that Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm trained in astronomy, you know, and I have reason to believe there is a particular hot spot nearby. I have been narrowing down the latitude and longitude at a particular intersection. The dream state will be extremely pronounced. It's a cosmic intersection. My experiment records dreams on a computer. That's fascinating. How does it work? I administer injections of a serum I have perfected. It sounds diabolical. Well, uh, actually, the main active ingredient is a vitamin B12 solution, a harmless one, which uh, I inject and uh, it enhances dream output. Then I wire the subject to an interface which I've specially designed. Of course, the design details are classified, so I can't really discuss them. Uh, they're all pretty technical anyway. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm looking for Professor Plankton. Yeah, that's me. Oh, really? <laughs> what? What's so funny? Well, I'm here for the ad. Uh, it's a little old. Really? So you don't need any test subjects anymore? Well, uh, we could maybe use one more subject. Really? 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 Well, we tried a number of subjects, but the simple fact is I wasn't very satisfied with the results. No great discovery has ever been made without a good deal of self-sacrifice. A number of factors contribute to capturing the images. The main issue is dream output. You need a high level of output. I discovered that a combination of chemicals, including a high concentration of vitamin B12, with external stimulation, was the formula for success. What kind of stimulation? Oh, any kind. Uh, the key is heightened brain activity. Ooh, how technical. It is a lab, after all. <laughs> I dreamt about you. It was a bit weird. I'm embarrassed to say. Well, don't be embarrassed. It's just your reaction to the first tests. It doesn't really mean anything. Do tell us, Dr. Plankton. You'd like me to come back? Can you? Sure. Locating the cosmic center was no easy task. The cosmic center? A unique phenomenon. A place where dream activity is the most, uh, vigorous. Ooh, sounds wonderful. I couldn't sleep so well last night. I think about you a lot, you know? I don't even know you. I don't even know you. You uh, get interested in some because of their dreams, but uh, I always keep a professional distance. 
You must get lonely. I, uh, love my work. Something really weird happened to me when I got home yesterday. My underwear was on backwards. So? Have you been undressing me while I sleep? I think I should know. I think I should know. I think I should know. Actually, there are a few bugs to work out, but when I get it going, I'll probably make millions. Just imagine, anyone who can dream can take a trip and then play it back later on a personal computer. Won't that be incredible? For a long time, I was just getting swirls of color. But slowly, the images have become sharp. One flash frame at first, and later, blocks of images. I just figure, with things moving as fast as they are, it's only a matter of time before someone figures this stuff out. And hey, why not me? In some ways, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Thank you.